All right, let's take a look at some questions related to employee liability. So in this question, Dishwashers and More Inc.'s weekly payroll of 23,000 included employee income taxes withheld of $3,426, Canada Pension Plan withheld of 990, and, employ and Employment Insurance or EI withheld of 420. It says prepare the journal entry to record the weekly payroll. And assume now that the employer is required to match every dollar of CPP contributions and to contribute 1.4 times CEI withholdings, prepare the journal entry, and prepare the journal entry for the remittance to the CRA. Okay, so let's just start with the first piece of this. So the first thing is to record the journal entry for the weekly payroll. So we can see it to told us here that the weekly payroll was $23,000. So we know that we're gonna to have to have that go through our income statement. So we're gonna say debit, salaries, expense. Three thousand. that was pretty easy. And then what are we gonna do with these other amounts? So we've got this 3426, this 990 and this 420. Well, ultimately these are amounts that we've, that we've taken back from our employees pay so we've withheld it. So we must, we know that we owe it. So we can't just keep the money. We have to give it to the CRA eventually. So while we're holding that money before we remit it to the CRA, we're gonna have some current liabilities related to that amount. So we're gonna have credit, um, credit income tax withheld. And that's going to be 3426. We're gonna have credit uh, CPP liability. This was a liability as well. Um, and that's going to be the 990 from the question. And then we're gonna have credit the EI liability. And that was 420. Okay, so the only issue we have here is that our journal entry doesn't balance. We've got the salaries expense, we've got these liabilities that we're gonna eventually owe to the CRA. So what's the offset? Well, the offset is we actually have to pay out cash. So this, what went through our bank account right now? So we paid out, we gave out paychecks for $23,000. We owe this amount to the government, but clearly we must have actually paid the employees some amount. So that difference is gonna be cash. And so the balance, the balancing entry here is 18,164. So that's what this first entry would look like for the weekly payroll. Now it says, imagine that the employer is required to match every dollar of CPP and to contribute 1.4 times the EI. So what would that journal entry look like? So if they had to contribute more, then let's think about that. So they had to contribute EI what does it say? They have to match CPP and contribute 1.4 EI. So we've got EI and CPP. So they're gonna match CPP. So we already had 990. So we know that that would mean they'd owe nine, another 990. And it would mean that, and the EI is 1.4 times. So it's gonna be 1.4 times our EI, which was 420. So that would give us 588. So we know that the employer now, so these were employee contributions and these are employer contributions, but ultimately it doesn't really matter from a, from a journal entry perspective because it's all gonna have to be remitted one way or another. So even though we're distinguishing here between these are employee and these are employer contributions, it's the same journal entry. So we know that if the employer is required to contribute the sum of these two amounts, it's gonna have to go through the income statement. So we're going to have debit salaries expense, which is going to be the sum of these two things, which is 1578. And then we're going to have credit, EI payable. And that was this 588. And then we're going to have credit, CPP payable. Sorry, CPP payable. And that's going to be this 990. That's what that entry would look like. And let's take a look back at the question. And then the last piece of this question is prepare the journal entry to record its payroll related payment to the CRA. So let's say that now the company decides that they're gonna remit cash. Well, 
ultimately, the first thing that they need to do is reverse all of their liabilities. So let's take a look. So what do they owe here? So income tax withheld is this number, 1426. CPP is going to be 990 plus 990. These two, we've got two CPPs. So the total of that is going to be 1980. And EI, we've got two EIs as well. We've got this amount and we've got this amount. So the sum of those two things are going to be 1008. So all the first thing we're going to need to do is we know we need to debit those liabilities to reverse them. So we're going to go debit uh, income tax withheld. Liability. So that's going to be this 3426 up here. We need to take that off our books. So we need to clear out the liabilities when we make the payment. So we're going to debit them to take the credits off of our balance sheet. Then we're going to credit EI payable. And that was that 1008 that we added up above. And we're going to go debit CPP payable. And that was this 1980 that we added up above. And so what's the offset to that? Well, if we're remitting it, just think about that. We're giving the cash. So we're clearing out the liability because we're settling it in cash. So the sum of those three things is 6414. And so that would be our cash payment to the CRA. Before we move on, let's look at one other quick employee-related liability question. So this question says, at December 31st, 2020, 30 employees of Plants vs. Zombie Corp have each earned one week of vacation time. The, uh, the employee's average salary is $1,000 per week. Prepare their December 31st adjusting entry. Well, as we know, vacation is a compensating absence. So it's something that we're going to pay the employees for even though they're not there. So if they've earned it, we need to recognize it as they serve. So they've earned it, so we need to put it on our books. So this entry is relatively simple. So we've got 30 employees and they've each earned one week, one week, and they earn $1,000 per week. So the amount that we're gonna need to put on our books here is just the simple math, 30 times 1,000, it's gonna be $30,000. And the entry here is pretty simple. We're simply gonna have debit salaries expense Salaries expenses are general uh, amount that we always put through our income statement. And then we're gonna have credit, vacation, vacation payable. Usually there's a separate GL where we track vacation, but essentially this is a current liability. This is, a, this is an income statement expense and we're just gonna have debit the expense. So now we've accrued the cost and we're gonna have a payable on our balance sheet, a current payable for 30,000. And that's what that question looks like. So hopefully that's helpful going through those two questions. Um, there's a couple others that I will post as well.